Hi folks, in this video we're going to be doing the inner front drive shaft gator on this Vauxhall VXR 2 litre turbo. This is a 2007 version. Keep watching. Right, so we've taken the front wheel off, it's the near side wheel on this one, and we've taken the front wheel off and we'll just show you what we've got first of all, and then we'll show you what we've got to actually go through to get to the inner drive shaft uh, gator. So let's have a look. Right, so here we go. I don't know if you can see there. Let me try and get you in there. There's our splitting our drive shaft inner CV boot there. And uh, we've got to obviously take out the drive shaft, and that involves undoing our large drive shaft nut at the end there, removing the brake caliper, taking the disc off. We also need to remove the uh, track rod end as you can see there by undoing the nut at the bottom. And there's also the pinch bolt there on the bottom of the wishbone which we've got to actually get off as well. And once we've got all that slackened off, which means once we've done all that, we should be then able to pull this assembly off of the end of the drive shaft and then we'll be able to hopefully pull the drive shaft out. So that's the game plan. Right, so the first thing we're going to do then is undo our drive shaft nut, and he's going to have to step on the brakes to do this, so uh, that nut's very, very tight, so we're going to just undo this now anyway. Right, okay then, so we've taken off the two 18mm bolts that hold the caliper on, and as you can probably see here, we've just tied the caliper up so it's out of the way. We don't want any strain on that rubber pipe there, because they could crack and that would be another part of the MOT failure. So what we're left with now is on the hub here, we've got this little spacer, as you can see, which just pulls off, like thus. And then you've got this little Allen key here, which should hopefully just retain the disc, so let me... So when you get to, when you come to do this, you you can undo this first uh, before you actually take the brake caliper off. But because we're not, we've just put two little studs in. So we're just gonna put that in there, and that gives us enough pressure to be able to undo that little bolt. Then <sighs> little things you have to come up against. Right there we go. It's just a little grub screw there that holds the disc on. Pull it out of the way. And that means we should be able to withdraw the disc. And there you go, put that to one side. And as you can see, there's the hub assembly there. So if you were doing a wheel bearing, this is the wheel bearing just there, look. There's just this little thing there, one complete unit. So what we're going to do now, we're going to disconnect the uh, track rod arm off of the steering rod. And also the pinch bolt underneath there. And hopefully that will be enough for us to uh, be able to withdraw the uh, hub. Right, okay then. So we've undone the bottom bolt for the track rod arm. That's an 18mm. And also the pinch bolt for the bottom uh, wishbone joint. That also is an 18mm. Now you really want a long, a long reach socket on them because the studs stick through. So get yourself a long reach socket. And they are quite tight. So that's them both nuts off. Now let's go and get a club hammer. Right, so hopefully by hitting the arm here, we should pop 
the ball joint out of the um, the slot. There you go. You see that? Yep. And there we go. So that's the way to get that one off. So hopefully now we can do the same with the bottom ball joint and we've got to stand on the wishbone to um, release the bottom ball joint. Now we might have to stick a screwdriver in the little slot at the back there just to spray it open a little bit because sometimes that can be really tight. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. I'm not hitting the end of this hard by the way I'm just it should, should just drift out now there we go hit it with the other end there we go that's it right now get that tap that drive shaft out there we go there we go take the weight of it you got it there we go Okay, that's fine. Let go. That's the drive shaft out of the hub now, as you can see. And all we've got to do now is hopefully lever that out of there, and the job should be a good one. Okay, then. Well, what I've managed to do is get a screwdriver up just behind here, hold the drive shaft straight, and literally give a little push and a pull at the same time. Now we've actually able to pop the drive shaft out. So. As you can see, we've got some gearbox oil coming out. Bearing in mind, we have got the car jacked up as well. So this should now just hopefully withdraw. Easier said than done. Yeah. There we go. There we go. God, it's quite a bit of oil coming out of there, isn't it? I thought there wouldn't be as much as that. Lucky we had that container there. And they say that's with the engine tips up as well, so... Make sure you put a container down, people. Right, hold on. Let me get out, can we? And uh, our broken joint. Well broken joint there. So once I take this clip off, we'll do that when we get the uh, drive shaft. Right, situation is, we've had a little change of plan. We took the old drive shaft out, as you know, and we started to strip it down, and we found a bit of a problem. Let me show you. This is the part of the drive shaft that we need to withdraw. And we can't actually withdraw it because as you can probably see it's been buckled with this metal ring here which is where the circlip holds the uh, gasket on and it's been pushed in the sides there and it's pulled out there and that means that because it's not a nice round cylindrical thing we can't actually pull the the drive shaft out to refurb it and this actual ring here is press fitted over the edge there so you can't actually take that off the rubber boot kit from um, Vauxhall's was about 37 pounds and for 25 pounds more we're able to buy a brand new drive shaft all complete ready to install so this is what we're going to install now right okay then so we plugged that old hole there as you can see so we just pull that tissue out of there now get that out of the way and make sure there's no grime or grit around the actual oil seal there which there isn't so we'll just take the new end of the drive shaft there and I'm just going to put a little bit of lube on it just around where the oil seal is going to seat just makes life a lot easier and you can see that clip on there that little clip there is the uh, clip that has to sit into a groove so we might feel a bit of resistance there so we'll have to push it in afterwards so here we go There we go, it went straight in, how about that? <laughs> you, can, you know it's gone in, because if you give a little pull afterwards, it's not coming out. You see that little clip's actually seated, so we know we're now in. We're now trying to feed the drive shaft back in through the end of the uh, spline hub nut there. Again, these nuts here, they're tight when you put them on. That's because they've actually been pinched, squashed either side, so that the threads are actually tight when you tighten it on. So don't think you've got it cross-threaded. The first part of the thread should go on lovely and smooth, and the last part, as you can probably see there, 
So it's just flattened off as you can see there and that's why it's, it's tight when you go to tighten it up. Right, okay, so we just ease that out. Feed it in. Might have to rotate it to line the splines up. There we go, come on. Just give the hub a little tap. There she comes. There we go, that's gone in a treat there, absolutely fantastic. Again, I'm not hitting that hard, it's just a little bit of resistance. It's hard where you can't use your hand, so normally if you had a copper mallet or a plastic mallet, you could use that, but I'm not putting any pressure at all on there, so that's that. Okay then, so the next thing which I'm gonna do is I wanna locate this bottom ball joint back in its holder. Make sure it's clean. You could probably put a little bit of lube on that actually, just to make sure it help it slide in. And I'm hoping to be able to just drop that down. You might need to lever this in place. Right, as I say, this could be the only... Oh, it's... Right, where's that club, Emma? That's just... Can you just push the hub in that way with your foot? You might have to leave yourself of the wall a little bit. Not too hard, go on. There she goes. Go on, up you go. There she goes. Yeah, just got to line that little slot up in the uh, pin so that the bolt actually falls through. There we go, is that going in now, isn't it? There we go, that nuts in. And these again are... What size were they? 18, wasn't it? I can't remember. Right, okay then. So when you tighten that bolt up, or when you go to tap this ball joint up, look through the hole, make sure you line up the slot with the little cut out in the actual pin, otherwise you, you're trying to knock it in and it won't go through the bolt. So you've got to get the bolt this up, move it up and down to get it the right height. Right, okay, that's that. So the next one is the steering track rod end. And again, this might start to spin. Is that an 18? Yep. So I just give it a tap down to seat it properly. <sighs> right, okay then. That's that on. Just put that on loosely for the moment. Till we're ready to tighten that up. And now we'll get the caliper bolts down and put the caliper bolt in place and we'll put some thread lock on them bolts as well. So that's what we're gonna do now. Yeah, you can probably see that nut there. Look how, how it's flattened off. And that will cause resistance when we tighten it up so it'll be a tight fit. And provided we torque it up to the correct setting, there's no fear of that unloosening. Right, okay then, so we've now done the caliper up and all the other steering geometry bits. So now we've got the center hub nut now, which we're gonna put our, that's funny, the one we took off was a 32 mil. And the one we're putting on, this new nut, is a 36 mil. Lucky I got one of them sockets. So apparently the tighten up sequence for this is 150 Newton meters. Back it off by 45 degrees and then tighten up to 250 Newton meters. So that's what we're gonna do now. Gary's gonna put his foot on the brake. Right, here we go. So we're looking for 150 Newton meters. You'll hear this click when it does. Now hold it on tighter. Right, there we go, that's 150 Newton meters. So then what you've got to do is back it off 45 degrees. So starting with a torque wrench there, 90 degrees will be straight up and 45 would be halfway. So we look at that sort of angle to back it off to there. And now we want to adjust this to 250. So unfortunately, my one only goes up to 200. So we're gonna have 200 and a bit of a guesswork after that, I'm afraid. Right, so we're at 200 there now. Let me just tighten that back up. And here we go again. So, until we're tight, and this is gonna be 200. Right, so that's 200. 
So I've just noticed the difference between 150 and 200. And I'm going to try and guess it at a, probably about... About there. That's going to probably be about 250. Yes, I'd say definitely. Okay then. Right, that's the hub nut back on now. All we've got to do now is to fill the gearbox fluid back up. Tighten up this little nut there, which is our locator. Get the little wrench on that, Gary. Just tighten it up. There we go. That's in place now. Tie rods back in. The drop link's back in. We've put a new drop link in there, as you know. Everything's looking fine. And we've got to do the gearbox all now. So Gary's just returning that little plastic spacer we had on top of the hub there. And after he's done that, we've just got to drain the oil out. Because although we drained it out in that container, Gary went down and actually bought some new oil. And that's how much it take, Gary? 2.4 litres. 2.4 litres. So for the sake of just topping it up, he's going to drain it down and put some a whole new load of fluid in. And that involves apparently taking the battery tray out as well. So uh, the fill point is below the battery tray, so we'll have to take the battery tray out. We'll do that in a second. So we'll see you in a minute. So the two battery nuts are 10 mil and this clamp holding the battery in the tray is a 13 mil, which I'm undoing now. Just remember not to bridge anything over these two terminals for the battery there, like a spanner or whatever, otherwise you'll be in all sorts of trouble. Right, and by the looks of that as well, we've got two 13 mil bolts there, one there and one there to remove the battery tray. So that's what I'm going to do now. And there's another one right down the back there, look. Wouldn't you just credit it? As you can see, there's your drain plug, uh, the fill plug rather, and that's uh, an Allen key by the looks of it. So you'll probably need an extension in there. It's got it in it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Very, very tight them. So just be careful that uh, realistically, what you want to do before you actually change any gearbox oil. I know we had to do it in this situation, but check that you can undo the fill plug first before you actually drain any oil out of your gearbox, because if you drain the oil out of your gearbox and you strip that thread there, there's no way you're going to be able to get any gearbox oil in. So it's quite a good idea just to make sure that you can get the fill plug out first before you go any further. Now, where's the gearbox filler? But do you know how much this takes? 2.4 it says. Yeah, but is there a, f a level indicator? Yeah, it says either 2.4 when it starts dripping out. Right, so you've got that one out of there, have you? Is that one still out? That's still out, yeah. Right, so just hold that there. Right, so that's the fill plug, as you know. And if we go under the wheel arch here, right, just up here at the front of the engine, that's where the uh, level indicator is. So what Gary's going to do now, he's going to start to fill this until we actually see oil dribble out of there. And then we know that we've uh, probably got enough in. Now the car's pretty level at the moment, although we've got the wheel off, the jack's pretty level, so we should be looking at water, uh, oil coming out of here. So that's what we're going to do now. Right, well as you can see now, we're just starting to dribble out there now. So I'm going to put the plug back in. So we're going to put the battery tray back in now, you haven't got to see that, you've seen us take that out. And that is how we've replaced a front drive shaft. This is the uh, near side drive shaft, the passenger side drive shaft on a Vauxhall VXR Mark V 2 litre turbo. And I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks very much, see you in the next video, bye for now.
happy days.